Royal Talents sent me a shipment of the new Pantone liquid inks, so I figured that we would play around with them today and see what we can do. For those of you that aren't familiar with the new Pantone Talons collaboration, this essentially is a water-based ink that corresponds with the color matching system by Pantone. And they come in these little 30 milliliter jars or in marker form. I'm going to be trying these out on two different papers. The larger one on the left is the Pantone paper that was formulated especially for these inks and markers. And the one on the right is hot press watercolor paper. And I'm just swatching each of the colors to see how they come out. Normally I would just use the Pantone paper that corresponds, but because I'm going to be doing a full mixed media painting, I just wanted to see how the water holds up against paper. And right when I was completely convinced that the Pantone paper was going to be the way to go, I tried some watercolor techniques down at the bottom of each of the pages, and I kind of decided that I was going to go with a hot press paper instead. Overall, the ink settled really nicely on the Pantone paper. It looked very smooth, um, as it's supposed to do. And then on the hot press paper, it's a little bit streakier. You can see the brush strokes. There's a little bit of bleeding on some of the colors. But then once I did the watercolor techniques at the bottom, you'll see the colors didn't really transition or blend nicely, and they did work a little bit better and were more saturated on that hot press watercolor paper. So that's the direction we went. Overall, the Pantone paper did not warp too much, just slightly, and the hot press paper held up a little bit better. So I decided to go hot press for my sketch. I'm just sketching on a 140 pound hot press block. And I use a lot of water with my um, style of painting, so I just figured it would be safer to go with a thicker paper for this. But if you use minimal water, you'd probably be fine uh, with this with a Pantone paper. Because I've never painted with these before, this is just kind of playing around and figuring it out as we go. So I thought it'd be fun to start off with the background where I'm just essentially doing a wet on wet technique, painting the background with water and then dropping the ink inside. And as you can see, the ink is very saturated, but when diluted with water, you get uh, really beautiful transitions between the colors. And I thought this would be a great way to warm up and also fill in the background really loosely. And as the paint dried, it kind of changed color a little bit, as most water-based kind of acrylics do. Uh, but this isn't necessarily an acrylic. The information on what it actually is is proprietary, but we do know that it is waterproof when dry, so I'm kind of painting with it like I would an acrylic ink. So my approach for the rest of the painting is just to start off with light layers. I'm mixing water into pretty much all the colors that I'm using and building my layers up slowly. Because it's waterproof when dry, I won't be able to work back into it and lift it. I'll only be able to color over top. So working lighter to darker is the, the plan of attack here. And I'm just kind of roughing in the dragon scales. I wasn't really sure at this point how much mixed media business I was going to do with it, so I wanted to see how full of an illustration I could get just with the inks. And I really enjoyed using these porcelain flower palettes just so that I could see my color in those larger mixing wells. And, you know, the colors mixed really beautifully. Uh, they're extremely vibrant, which is right up my alley. I love vibrant colors. And I really enjoyed using these um, as opposed to the markers, just because I can control the amount of saturation and you could definitely get blends a little bit easier. Speaking of saturation, uh, the skin tone was fun to paint on this. I just went really light with my colors, and I put a little bit of extra purple in the shadows on her skin, just because I wanted her to not feel too separate from the dragon. And if you haven't guessed already, this is kind of a painting inspired by the Chinese New Year. And with the uncharted territory of these paints, I was being a little bit more hesitant to add color than I normally would, um, just because there is no white available in this line that's opaque. 
So we're just building up our transparent colors and preserving the white of the paper for our highlights. So slowly I'm building up my colors and I did use a lot of colors in this piece. I wanted it to be pretty rainbow just to see how the colors interact with each other and I wanted to be able to mix a lot of colors too. So the mixing was pretty seamless and most importantly layering worked really well. Because this dries waterproof I'm able to go back in and really darken up my shadowed areas and also mix new colors by using extra water on my second layer to form a transparent color to layer over top of my initial layer. This really came in handy for things like the dragon scales, the hair, basically things that I just wanted to make look like they have a lot of dimension. I'm not necessarily surprised that these layer nicely because I've used the markers quite a bit and the layers of the markers create beautiful color mixes. The only difference between these two is that you're able to control the saturation by adding water to the ink. So you're able to have a little bit more possibility for different color mixes you can do. You don't necessarily have to go with that bold kind of stylized marker look. So if you're using it for that Pantone color matching system, where you're able to actually match up the marker color to a Pantone swatch or a Pantone number, then you'd want to use the markers, but because I'm just playing around with inks and having fun and <laughs> basically combining colors, I don't really care if it matches or not. So um, I like that they can be used in multiple different ways. And originally these Pantone inks were just made as refills for the markers um, because those markers are refillable, but I'm glad that, you know, they're also marketed and offered as just a painting ink as well. The only hiccup that I encountered while working with the inks in this style was that they bled just a little bit past wherever I wanted the wash to go, so I painted smaller areas and let the bleeding take place. I think the reason why this happened was because they are pigmented inks, and, you know, I'm not really using them how they're supposed to be used, so there was just a little bit of bleeding on the paper. The more water I added, the less this actually occurred. Honestly, it's just a minor inconvenience, and I just underpainted the areas that I knew were going to remain fairly light, such as the skin. So this is where I began adding other supplies into the painting. I did want to show you guys what it would look like with just the Pantone inks, and I do think that you'd be able to do a complete illustration with them. But because these are a water-based supply, I want to add different things in and see how they interact with different products because I love mixed media. So um, these are very compatible with the Amsterdam acrylic ink. I used it in white and just essentially added some highlights. I was able to tint with the Pantone inks and the acrylic ink really easily. Next, I switched over to the Brunzeal Aquarelle watercolor pencils. These are nice because they have a very subdued, kind of tenuous color to them. It's a lot softer than other brands of watercolor pencils out there. So if you're going for a super pigmented look, then maybe pass on these because these are going to give you a soft look. These are a professional grade pencil and they have a really wonderful feel when you're drawing. It almost feels like you're drawing with a pearl, the way that they glide across the paper. I essentially am using these to add some lines and then I'm also shading in some areas where I just want a little bit more definition of my shadows. And you can actually follow behind the colored pencil with a wet brush to blend it out and soften those edges a little bit. It's really nice working on top of the Pantone ink for this reason, because I know that everything underneath is waterproof, so it's completely dry, and I don't have to worry about over blending anything or making any muddy areas. And I wasn't sure like how detailed I wanted to go with his dragon scales and his hair and stuff. I basically was just having fun and seeing how it came out. I didn't really have um, any major plans for the direction of how I wanted it to look. 
I used a bunch of different references of dragons and I kind of like photoshopped some weird monstrosity for the face. So I was going off of that and I think it turned out pretty cool. I was going for like kind of a turquoisey color as the main color just to have a really beautiful contrast to her vermilion dress that she has. Yeah, I, I kept going back through and adding a little bit of white throughout on the hair of the dragon just because I didn't want it to be too colorful. I wanted there to be a little bit of an area for the eye to rest. You'll see me kind of switch back and forth between the colored pencils and the inks at this point. I was going through with a little bit of the lightest gray color and adding shadows in a couple areas. So working like this is really nice because you're able to kind of bounce back and forth. And I know that whatever I put down with the ink will be waterproof. And if there's an area that has colored pencil, it's subject to blend a little bit. But I was able to slowly and steadily build up my layers, which is how I like to work the most. And when you are drawing on hot pressed paper with watercolored pencils, you're not going to get that unwanted kind of grainy texture. So I normally opt for hot press if there's a possibility of using colored pencils. And one thing that's really great about working with these Pantone inks in particular, or even this combination of pencils with ink, is that they're both pigment based. And they also have very high light fast ratings, which means that the color is not going to fade over time. So as long as you're working on acid free paper, you're going to get something that's very archival. And if you do plan on working with fugitive colors, something that's dye-based perhaps, like a liquid watercolor, it's just something to keep in mind that it's going to fade over time. So if you're using it in a digital capacity, perhaps for like a marketing illustration or something that's going to be scanned, then you don't have to worry about it. But if you're planning on selling or hanging it up or you just want to make sure it doesn't fade over time, then light fast rating is something to look out for. I'll probably be using these more than my liquid watercolors because I don't have to compromise on the longevity of the color or on the saturation. I think I honestly could have stopped with this illustration at this point, but I wanted to add some metallics to it just to really amp up that like magical dragon kind of feel. And also I thought that the metallic gold would look really beautiful with all of the reds. So for this I'm using the Fine Tech premium metallic watercolors. These are awesome. They're mica based, but some of the colors actually even have real silver inside. So these are really beautiful. So I used metallic gold on her and then on the dragon I used interference colors. And you'll see it um, when I move the camera around to a different angle. That the interference colors show up better on dark colors um, than they do on light. And then you'll just get a little bit of a color shift when you move the paper. So I didn't want anything that was going to be too distracting to take away from all the scale work on the dragon, but you'll be able to see that metallic when the light shines differently. So I used a little bit of um, yellow and blue on the dragon, and then I used gold on her headdress and her actual dress. And after the first pass of metallics and checking how it looked in different lights, I wanted to add some softer areas of the metallic as well. One really cool thing about this is you can just add a little bit of extra water and give it more of a subtle look. It doesn't have to be so strong. So I wanted to add some scales with the metallic in kind of a watered down version, just so that I had a range of the really strong and the softer. So now that I have it off the block, I'll be able to show it off a little bit better to you. I can't stress enough how important it is to be able to either have a movable light source on your desk when painting with metallics so you can kind of rotate it back and forth and see how the metallics look from different angles um, and in different lighting because as you work with those metallics, especially if you're working with high quality ones, they can really get away from you just how metallic they are. And some people enjoy that, like me, and some people want it a little bit more subtle. So it's just whatever works for you. Use your art supplies however makes you happy. 
Speaking of happy, I overall am very pleased with these Pantone inks. I enjoy the liquid form a lot more than the markers. I think they suit my style really nicely. And I'm very happy that they're so compatible with other types of art supplies as well. Definitely let me know down in the comments if you would like to see more dragon paintings or if you would like to learn more about the Pantone inks. I hope that this video was helpful to you in some way. I really appreciate you watching, especially if you made it this far. So thank you so much, and I hope you have a wonderful week.